Kyle Kalinske went after uh, Sam Harris. He gave his analysis on Sam Harris as of currently. Uh, check it out. Well, that's kind of what led me to uh, ultimately be significantly more in the Noam Chomsky camp than, you know, the that camp, is that um, they their analysis is not really sophisticated. And, you know, I had, I actually spoke on my channel to Sam Harris, and I remember really trying to get to the brass tacks of what his beliefs are when it comes to foreign policy. And I just remember basically his only point that he kept reiterating in different ways is that, well, listen, if Dick Cheney had his druthers, he would want to make Iraq like Nebraska. Like, that's what he kind of kept saying over and over. And I thought, like, wow. what a silly, <laughs> like, that's just such a ridiculous way of of viewing the world. It's almost like you can just brush aside all of the crimes committed by U.S. empire and yeah. and, and just kind of say, well, listen, they, I guess he means kind of well, therefore you can't really look at us like we're the bad guy. But, of course, if you go to the evidence, and this is something Noam Chomsky does better than anybody else, you find out very quickly we do what we do around the world for natural resources, for money, for power. And the idea that on any level we're concerned about altruism or human rights or being the world, world police is honestly laughable. I mean, our top allies, uh, Israel is an apartheid state, you know? Saudi Arabia <laughs> is an absolute theocracy and a dictatorship. The idea that, like, you can look at the way the United States acts and think, well, no, I mean, we, we kind of mean well. That's just factually wrong. And, you know, over time, I, I saw the bigger rift in the, the b bigger rifts in these two communities. And, you know, I mean, Sam Harris, you want to talk about going off the deep end. As soon as you started being, like, open to the idea of race science, like with the whole Charles Murray thing, if you're feuding with Ezra Klein, something is wrong with you. That guy's like the most milk toast neoliberal on the planet. You know what I mean? And you're he's trying to make it seem like Ezra Klein is unreasonable because he doesn't agree with Charles Murray or he's not open to Charles Murray's ideas. And the fact of the matter is, any serious intellectual or academic, it doesn't it's not that hard to see that what Charles Murray is doing. You know, it, it's like a very it's barely trying to mask his bigotry and his racism with his work. So the fact that, you know, Harris kind of lumped him into the, um, like, oh, no, he's just not being politically correct. Like, it, no, it's not, that, it's not that he's, you know, factually wrong about the stuff he's pushing, and it's not that it's a dangerous path that he goes down. It's that, oh, no, he's just not politically correct when he talks about race science and when he says, like, hey, maybe we should totally uh, gut the social safety net because we can't help those uh, poor minority communities anyway. So, yeah, over time I have seen um, how far off the rails, you know, somebody like Sam Harris has gone and ultimately why uh, I find myself significantly more in agreement with a guy like Noam Chomsky. Yeah, the race science thing is, is hilarious because they act like it's this forbidden knowledge that's been, you know, uh, pushed back from society because it's politically incorrect. No. Oh, it's been debunked by scientific circles. That's yeah. why it's been pushed down, and that's why it's forbidden, because it literally is a debunked hope science. And Ezra Klein presented that to Sam Harris in, like, the kindest way. You know what I mean? Almost like holding his hand and walking him down the path right. of, like— trying a little too hard to be, like, yes, respectful. Yes, being very conciliatory and very much like, hey, man, listen, I'm a fan of you. Like, um, Ezra Klein, I mean, he was really— bending over backwards to be really nice about it to Sam Harris. And it's almost like Sam Harris couldn't help but go to, to the same thing he says over and over whenever he's in a position like this, which is like, you know, he plays the victim. He, he, oh, I'm being taken out of context. I'm being misrepresented. It's like, stop. You're such a whiny baby. Just <laughs> it's like I just read an essay from you and it like, you know, at what point am I not taking you out of context? Exactly. <laughs> one page, two pages, three pages. Exactly. I'm not sure he's ever, you know, uh, engaged in a major disagreement with somebody and not walked away saying, I'm being taken out of context and you're misrepresenting <laughs> me. It happens every single time. And it doesn't matter how much 
Like when I had that talk with Sam <laughs> Harris on, on my channel a long time ago, I was really trying to stress to him, like, listen, dude, I'm not your enemy. Like, I've read your work. I liked a lot of it. But I was giving, I was presenting genuine questions that I was interested in his answers about foreign policy, for example. And but he had this shield up the entire time and basically started the conversation by berating me for even bothering to speak to somebody like Glenn Greenwald. He went he went out of his way to say Glenn Greenwald is not even a journalist. It, wow. Dude, he has a Pulitzer. Like, wow. Who, who says that? I mean, what a ridiculous thing to say. That's crazy. Yeah. That's um that. That's really funny, Kyle. And I, I actually forgot that you had Sam Harris on your show. And that's sort of fascinating that he would berate you because you would think as someone with the name of your show, Secular Talk, who, you know, knows that you've read his books would be more kind or or just like, yeah. you know, try, try to almost convince you he where was... he's coming from. But it sound, sounds like he used the most, I mean, by basically saying that, oh, Dick Cheney would have turned Iraq into Nebraska. So he meant well. It's almost, I mean, it's almost cartoon is saying well thanos meant well because the reason he wanted to kill half the universe is to make the universe better it's like i mean it's that it's almost that ridiculous yeah and it's also you know the idea of like and he does this with stuff like torture like well theoretically are there any uh, possible circumstances where maybe we should engage in it in order to save more lives and it's like well do you not realize how <laughs> these things are actually empirically used forget about theoretically Look at empirically yeah. how it's used. I mean, we tortured people at Abu Ghraib. We tortured people at Guantanamo Bay. And when more and more information came out, and the more we learned, the more it was crystal clear, we were torturing innocent people. I mean, we're talking about uh, Bush and Cheney cut a deal with Afghan warlords and Pakistani warlords after 9-11 and told them, hey, listen, you send us... Uh, people who are jihadists because we got attacked on 9-11 and we want to get them back, basically. And then, uh, guess what, guys? It turns out uh, warlords from Afghanistan and Pakistan are not that trustworthy because what they did is they rounded up their political opponents and they sent them to us. So, yeah, I mean... Most it, of them were more, more dark-skinned, you know, Arabs because a lot of those people that we worked with were, were, were not. So, like, a lot of the people ended up just, you know, it's like, oh, they, you know, they look like, they look Arab or they look like jihadists, so... Yeah, like the idea of like Dick Cheney standing there, like, you know, going through evidence to figure out whether or not this is somebody who we should really be holding. No, I mean, we didn't give these people due process. And this, by the way, this is just like a, a clear example as to why due process is really not debatable. It's non-negotiable. You need to have due process to make sure in any circumstance that the government actually gets it right. You know what I mean? But also the fact that we did torture, it'd be bad enough if we tortured and we did torture people who w were terrorists because that's still not OK. But we did it and the people were freaking innocent, you know. So it, the idea that like you can intellectualize and theorize about these this stuff when the empirical evidence points to the fact that we've become the monsters that we're trying to avoid. I mean, that's the thing I was never able to get over with with the guy with a guy like Harris. It's like it's so flippant and dismissive about when we do fucked up stuff, you know what I mean? And just kind of brushing it under the rug as well, I guess we mean well and we have good intentions. And that's just a, a, a terrible misreading of the situation. It's massively unempirical and it's laughable. Sam Harris has been a very controversial figure for the past couple years. So it started out with him being, you know, full, uh, sort of uh, talking about Islam and saying that that's the main reason and different things like that. But, you know, foreign policy is where I massively disagree with Sam Harris. He's also extremely pro-Israeli, which is pretty embarrassing, but we know why. Uh, but he's also more of a uh, more of a hawk than others. But what you're talking about now is what the Charles Murray thing, the whole bell curve thing, is, is, pretty, is pretty fucking stupid. The whole point of the bell curve, by the way, the goal of the bell curve is to demolish the welfare state, to absolutely demolish it. And they're going at it from a different angle now. So what they do is they go, oh, we're going to give you this. And then our policy proposal is to abolish the welfare state. So what is their, what are they trying to abolish? Now they're, they, what they basically said is we need to stop subsidizing low IQ single mothers, which is purely insane. Uh, we don't help people based on their IQ, which is 
fucking stupid. Uh, but IQ is massively, you know, massively deals with environmental factors. If you were to take an IQ test and then get your results and then take tests to prepare you for the next one, you're going to perform higher. Okay. It's clearly, that's how, that's how that works. It's very obvious. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not a good look for Sam Harris. However, I will add the caveat and I know that a lot of people, uh, don't agree with me when I, when I say this, when I say this, but I do give Sam Harris credit because despite the Charles Murray thing and all of that and being part of the intellectual dark web, he is anti-Trump, okay? He does voice his opinion against Trump. Now, he'll say pretty ridiculous things from time to time, but I think everyone does pretty much. Like, I made a, you know, I talked about how he compared moral integrity to a Vox, Vox journalist to the men in hoods, which are the KKK. Uh, nope, there's no comparison between the two whatsoever. And, uh, you know defending defending the the race race realism which is just racism by the way uh definitionally is is just bullshit okay it's complete bullshit it's a total ploy by charles murray and he has a bunch of other works that are massively conservative and it's because he's trying to abolish the welfare state so he goes at it from a different direction 